But as close as I get to the ring, I'm more confident. Once I'm in the ring, I'm a god. No one can beat me. A good fighter just to be diligent and committed and disciplined, doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. You're not doing it with passion and love, and you're just doing it for money. It's, um, the emotional outcome is gonna be disastrous. Not necessarily the size of the guy, you know what I mean? It's the, basically the spirit and the competitive in his heart. As we get older, we lose our hair, we lose our teeth, we lose our mothers. Talent? I don't believe in talent. Many times I quit boxing before I even became a professional boxer. He's an American former professional boxer. He was known for his ferocious and intimidating boxing style, as well as his controversial behavior inside and outside the ring. Nicknamed Iron or Kid Dynamite, he's considered to be one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. He's Mike Tyson, and here's my take on his top 10 rules for success. Number 10 is my personal favorite, so I'm curious to find out which one you guys like the most, and make sure to stick around all the way to the end for some special bonuses. While I'm in the dressing room, five minutes before I come out, my gloves are laced up. I'm breaking my gloves down. I'm, I'm pushing the lever in the back of my gloves. I'm gloves. breaking the middle of the gloves so my knuckle could pierce through the leather. I feel my knuckle piercing against the tight leather gloves on the Everlast boxing gloves. When I come out, I have supreme confidence, but I'm scared to death. I'm totally afraid. I'm afraid of everything. I'm afraid of losing. I'm afraid of being humiliated, but I'm totally confident. The closer I get to the ring, the more confidence I get. The closer, the more confidence I get. The closer, the more confidence I get. All during my training, I've been afraid of this man. I thought this man might be capable of beating me. I've dreamed of him beating me, but that won't, but I always stayed afraid of him. But as close as I get to the ring, I'm more confident. Once I'm in the ring, I'm a god. No one can beat me. I walk around the ring, but I never, I never take my eyes off my opponent. I keep my eyes on him, even if he's ready and pumping. He can't wait to get his hands on me as well. I keep my eyes on him. I keep my eyes on him. I keep my eyes on him. Then once I see a chink in his arm, boom, and one of his eyes may move, and then I know I have him. Then when he comes to the center of the ring, he still looks at me with his piercing look, and as if he's not afraid, but he already made that mistake when he when he looked down for that one-tenth of a second, I know I had him. He'll fight hard for the first two or three rounds, but I know I already broke his spirit. During the fight, I'm supremely confident. I'm moving my head, he's throwing punches. I'm making a miss and I'm countering. I'm hitting him to the body, I'm punching him real hard. And I'm punching him, when I'm punching him, I know he's not able to take my punches. One, two, three punches, I'm throwing him punches and bunches. He goes down, he's out. I'm victorious. Mike Tyson, greatest fighter that ever lived. A good fighter is not necessarily the greatest fighter that ever lived. It's what, where you want to go. You know what I mean? Um, a good fighter just to be diligent and committed and disciplined, doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. You know, always testing yourself and forcing yourself to the limits, you know? If you know you um, like, uh, if you love women, then deny yourself that. You know what I mean? That's what... Um, that's what um, success in general is all about, sacrifice. From my experience, of any little success I may have had, just be willing to sacrifice, you know. Um, unfortunately, sometimes you can't have fun accomplishing your goals. And when sometimes people um, don't have the, um, the determination, the will, and uh, the steadfastness, the tenacity, they, um, they give in under the slightest struggle. I don't want to do anything unless I'm passionate about it. You know, I don't care if it's okay anymore. That's what I learned about peace and happiness. That um, if you don't, if you're not doing it with passion and love, and you're just doing it for money, it's um, the emotional outcome is going to be disastrous. And that's from my experience. That's just really what I know. So I know it has to be um, just for pure passion and the love for what I'm doing. As a smaller boxer yourself in terms of stature, how do you take on these big guys with a big reach? I don't know. It's not necessarily the size of the guy, you know what I mean? It's the, basically the spirit and the competitive in his heart. You know, if a guy wants to fight, he could be four foot two and fight a guy six foot nine. You know, when you, if you want to fight, you're going to fight and you're going to do well. That's just the average of law here in the game of boxing. If you really want to do it, you're going to do well. But what I found out in life, as life goes on, life is about losing. As we get older, we lose our hair, we lose our teeth, we lose our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, and, um, but it's the ones who overcome, they're lost in life and um, could shun away adversity and always willing to fight at every, every particular moment in life. 
are the ones that are able to transcend and be able to spread the world to other people who's in that same particular gender as they are. In order to be great, uh -huh. you know what I mean, you gotta be prepared to fail greatly as well. You know what I mean? It's all about how you handle the failures. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm I'm good at handling failures. Yeah. And I'm good at handling this. I don't know, I'm probably I'm not that good at handling success. I can handle failure better than I can handle success. <laughs> I feel I was born to fight because I have no other interest in anything else. Anybody's a fighter in their own right. You're a fighter, I'm a fighter. Everyone that's in this room, even the newspaper men, they're fighters. But everybody don't get up every morning and run. Everybody don't go to the gym every morning. And everybody don't have enough discipline to wait in the locker room for two hours or three hours, then go in the ring and do what they've been taught all those years in the gym. And so that's what separates a champion from a mediocre fighter. What about talent? Talent? I don't believe in talent. Well, some people, they have talent. That's it's good. It helps when you have talent. As long as you have a lot of determination and willpower, that's all you need. And you, you have to have the will to win. All know about your love for Customato. How much of him is in you when you're doing this? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just not him. Maybe um, if I continue to do this for another 20 years or so, I may, I may be somewhere in there close to his um, level of protection of his fighters. But as of now, no, I'm it's, it's not there yet. I mean, it's not as seething experience as Mr. D'Amato was. You speak of him in the present tense. He's very much with you at all times? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Would you have him as one of the most special people in your life? Absolutely. No one could inspire me as much as he did. You know, if I was um, discouraged, I'd say, you know, because sometimes I'm sure in your field, you say, well, really, things may have got difficult, something may happen in your life. I don't want to do this no more. We all go through that. I don't want to do this no more. And he would inspire me to say, hey, this is the route to go. He would inspire me to want to do. Many times I quit boxing before I even became a professional boxer. As an amateur, I quit. I didn't want to do it. And, um, he gave me the, um, the inspiration and the reason that why I should be doing this. My whole job was just to um, inflict pain in people's minds. A lot had to do intimidation factor. Yeah. That's the biggest aspect of, of anything in life is intimidation. Because mm -hmm. once a person who's a great anything is intimidated, he can no longer perform under the high level that he's normally accustomed to working because he's intimidated and he's shut down. Yeah. And I'm the ma and listen, I'm the master of that. I put it out. I was going to be the most intimidating after in the history of the world of sports. Forget that, forget boxing, the history of the world of sports. You know? mm -hmm. And you have to be willing, boxing and sports and everything. And life is all about a bluff. It's almost like playing cards life. I say more so than, um, I say more so than I say shooting dice. Yeah. You know, because you could change dice and stuff, but they can't, they're hard, they can't mold. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You just gotta, if, you, if you're just shooting, you shoot, cards could bend. Yeah. Cards could bend like life, us yeah. and life, we can bend. Mm -hmm. And even though we got a bad hand, that don't mean we're gonna lose the f game. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're going to stay in there, we're going to hold it to the end. Uh -huh. And it's the same way in fighting yeah. and in life. Because we were born in swallows and the sewers and gutters, that don't mean we're going to stay there if we have the desire and willpower, perseverance, to be able to endure the pain. Yeah. We got to endure that pain. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at me, everybody likes me now. Yeah. I'm the last man standing. Everybody likes the last man. What will people remember about Mike Tyson 50 years from now? 50 years? I don't know, that's the most destructive, ferocious fighting machine that God ever created. Yeah, that's what I think. Thank you guys so much for watching. I made this video because Ali Hassan asked me to. So if there's a famous entrepreneur that you want me to profile next, leave it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'd also love to know which of Mike Tyson's top 10 rules had the biggest impact on you and why. Leave it in the comments. I will join in the discussion. Thank you so much for watching. Continue to believe and I'll see you soon. Took a long time to grow up. It took a long time to grow up and deal with the responsibilities of life because you know when you're boxing, you're playing rugby and football and all that's bad. What are you doing? You're living, a, you know, you're living the life of Raleigh. You're living like a kid. You don't have many responsibilities. What do you miss most about the life then? Um, the old days. I, it's not much I miss about it. No. Because when you really think about it, the height of my career, I'm making um, thirty, forty million a fight. 
doing what I want, anybody I want to see and meet, I see them on television, strange, I see them, I like them, I make a phone call, I can meet anybody, do what I want to do, but I didn't have any peace. You know, I didn't have peace, and now I'm at the, I'm not even at the height of my career, I don't make a tenth of the money that I made then, and I got cartoons, I have shows, I could have never accomplished this when I was fighting. I would have never gotten along with the producer, I would have been arrogant, I, it's just, you learn humbleness in, as you get older in life, and you learn, um, if you don't come in this world, Humble, this world would thrust humbleness upon you. Do you think it's more important to be respected or feared? I would like to be respected. Respect is more powerful than love, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, but how many people out of the obligation of love, Machiavelli, out of the obligation of love, have we hurt? Just think about it. Everybody that's listening to me, just think out of the obligation of love, this is my sister, my brother, my girlfriend, that I cheated on, my boyfriend, who I didn't tell him everything. I was, he shouldn't have knew this is not his child, or whatever the situation may be, you know what I mean? We just have to know um, this is what it is, you know what I mean? Some people can get by with just being respected, some people get high off of being feared. The Mitch Blood Green story is the greatest story ever it's, told. I, I've we hope Mitch is still around. Yeah. I love that story, the best. In your one-man show you talk about, like, you're like, this guy might even show up, but like, he actually had you worried at one point because No, he because listen, every time I'm somewhere, this guy's popping up. You know, I'm in the hospital because of my car accident. He's, and they, they said, Mike, look outside. I look out my hospital window, it's a crowd and there's the president. He's giving an interview calling me. I have to hang that Sicily Tyson, homo Mike Tyson, this, this. Holy <laughs> shit. For those of you that don't know the Mitch Blood Green story, he fought Mitch Blood Green and, and he beat him. Then he like terrorized Mike for years. Would show up it's at dinners, me around, at restaurants, me. and would try to fight him haunt all the me. time. <laughs> so Mike's getting fitted for a suit one night. <laughs> There's this place, what was it? In, in, the the in Harlem. In Harlem, all right. In Harlem where- You know where you buy them, um, you know, those, those knockoff stuff. Right. <laughs> and he said this place, would, it was a place where you would go get fitted for suits, and it was open at 3, 4 in the morning. And he said, that might sound weird to you, but pimps, rappers, and, <laughs> and everybody else would go get suited at this place, so that's why it was open that late. And uh, he said Mitch Blood Green came walking in one day and started, you know, calling them all kinds of names. Holy and, moly. And, they, <laughs> they, and he, said, <laughs> he said he was like a zombie. He said he hit him, and he broke his hand when he hit him. And he knocked him. <laughs> so he knocked him out dead. And then he gets up like Jason and, and like the, he says every time he knocks. No, out, when I knock him out, I'm scared. So let's get to the car. Next thing I know, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> what the? <laughs> f I didn't even believe this. <laughs> I'm my right hand to go on my children. Like he, he out. And I said, let's get out. He walking. Next thing you know, don't, 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 don't. Like he keeps locking this guy out, and the guy keeps getting up and chasing after him out to the thing. And then, and then the game changer is he rips the mirror off Mike Tyson's Rolls Royce, and Mike has to get out and knock him out again before he drives away. But I was gonna let him get rid of that. I was gonna let him get rid of that. Gonna take my little Royce, Royce, and break the window off, break the little mirror, the, the side mirror, right? Yeah, ripped it off. <laughs>